Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Find My Past Live. I hope you're all keeping very well. My name is Ellie, and if you've not been with us before, we do these live streams on Facebook every week. On a Wednesday, midweek, we normally have an, an expert session or a presentation or a guest for you to enjoy. And then on a Friday, we have a more informal chat about this week's recent record releases. Now, as I said, my name is Ellie. I run social media for Pharma Past, and I'm very privileged to be joined by a very special guest today. And I will allow him to introduce himself. This is Gary Tucson, everybody. Hello, Gary. Hello. Yes. Uh, hello. I'm Gary Tucson. I'm the County Archivist at the Norfolk Record Office um, in Norwich. And today I'm going to be talking to you about a project which I've been running for the last six months called History Begins at Home. Um, and it's part of a lot of work I've been doing over the last few years on about using archives to promote people's well-being. That's fantastic. And there's going to be so much for us to talk about here. I'm, okay, I'm actually thinking, I don't know how we're going to get this into an hour, but uh, we will uh, we will try our very best, I'm sure. So I'm just going to open up the comments, Gary, before we get started, uh, just so we can, so I can get them open as well. Welcome people. And let's see who we've got coming in so far. Let's scroll back up. We've got William. Hi, William. We've got Sue, Anya, Graham, Patricia. Victoria. Yeah, we've got our first couple of viewers, so that's fantastic. Um, so just to give everybody a brief rundown of what we're going to be chatting about today, uh, Gary and I, we're going to be talking about the History Begins at Home project, as Gary has said. I've got a website for that, and I've got a Twitter page that I'm going to share with you uh, when we start interviewing Gary. Um, I'm also really interested, well, we're very both very interested to hear about your childhood experiences of the outdoors, of sports, of holidays and things like that. This is what the project is all about, it's about talking about your past. So if you'd like to share a memory about your childhood experiences with sports or the outdoors or holidays, please pop it into the comments and we will have a read of some of those a little bit later on. We're also going to chat about Gary's role with archives for well-being, some 19th century asylum records, and a little bit more. Also, if you do have a question for Gary, uh, whether it's about the History Begins at Home project or perhaps about his role as County Archivist for Norfolk, please add that into the comments as well and we'll try and get to as many questions as we can. And we'll try and do maybe a short Q&A at the end. So I'll just go back to the comments quickly, just to see that everybody's joining us. Let's scroll back up and welcome people. Oh, there's lots of you saying hello. I'm having to scroll for quite a while here. Bear with me just a second. <laughs> uh, we've got Ray, Pat, Anita, Rosie, Sue, Ellen, Gail. We've got Rita, Jackie, Patricia, Daz. Oh, there's lots of you today. Marianne from San Diego. Kate joining us for the first time. Hi, Kate. As I said, we, we do these uh, twice a week. Thank you so much for joining us. Please do interact in the comments, talk amongst yourselves and ask any questions that you've got. We will also have Niall in the comments with us as well. So make sure you say hi to him too. Uh, we've also got Sue from Preston. Kelly saying we're a welcome break from the rain. That's what we're here for. It's dry in Norfolk. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Gemma saying Tucson was my great grandmother's no, sorry great grandfather's surname. All oh, right, so, oh, that's interesting. Yes, because there aren't many of us around. I was going to say you might have a connection there. You might have yeah, to talk I mean, to Gemma at some point. I, I, I'm not from the north, but there were quite a few in Lancashire because I think there's a Tucson Tucson College in Lancashire somewhere. Well, there was. Oh, but we've got Rose from Reading. Um, we've got Karina from Australia, also a newbie. Fantastic. Uh, Jackie from Oxfordshire. There are, sorry, there are just so, there's so many comments here. I think we should probably get started because we do have a lot to go through today. Yeah, sure. Um, so I've got a couple of questions for you, Gary, before we move to um, customer uh, uh, audience questions, so to speak. Yeah. So what I wanted to ask you first is you have had quite a varied career. Um, you are County Archivist for Norfolk, you are Chair of Archives for the Wellbeing Network, you are Chair of Chief Archivists in Local Governments, so you've got a lot of strings to your bow, so to speak. And I thought it might be interesting for our, our audience for you to tell us a little bit about your career and how you've come to 
where you are now, I suppose. I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I've been I've been an archivist for a long time, I suppose. So I started my career after. <laughs> history degree, <laughs> left <laughs> left university looking for a job, and I ended up getting a job as an archive assistant working in the Devon Record Office in Exeter. Um, while I was there, I um, I didn't go off to university because to become an archivist, you have to do a postgraduate qualification. And I did it by distance learning, you know, which took, took me a while, you know, I started off thinking I'll do it in two years, ended up taking four because I bought a house, got married, had children in the middle, you know, those sort of things. But then when I qualified, um, I moved to Derbyshire to my first professional job and sort of like, you know, got an archivist job. Then I moved to Cardiff and I was in the Glamorgan Record Office where I was their senior archivist. Then I became their um, programme director and built the new Glamorgan Record Office. I, you know, started doing capital projects. Then I became county artist of Gwent. And then that's where I, I moved the office from um, Cumbran, where I was in the basement of County Hall, to a grade two listed star building on the old steelworks site in Ebervale which is a, you know, a great project where we built this that's sort of not too shabby <laughs> on, that was good and then after that I came to Norfolk <laughs> yeah so I've been here just well I've been here seven years now incredible and it's just you you've worked in so many different places and you the, the wealth of experience that you must have is is vast and I suppose that's what's led you to this new project uh, history begins at home I was just wondering for our audience who maybe don't know anything about this or don't know enough about it, could you explain the project? How did it come into being? Okay, yeah, well, well um, when we went into lockdown, you know, at the start of the pandemic, I was aware that there was loads of activity going online, you know, lots of record officers were putting stuff online and getting content out there. And I convened a meeting of the chief archivists, our exec committee, and said, you know, this is great, superb, you know, what people are doing is wonderful. But is there anything we can do together and come together and sort of do something which is a bit, a bit more joined up? And, that's, um, and one of the things I was really keen on was putting something out there which obviously well-being is a big thing. We'll talk more about that later. But it's also a little bit more interactive. So rather than passive viewing, it's something you can join it. Either. There are lots of interactive things archives putting it out there at the moment. Um, and the idea of doing something which obviously people, obviously they can use Find My Past and they can go online and do a certain amount of research. But one of the things which I'm sure lots of people who are watching this have said is, oh, I wish I'd asked. <laughs> you know, Absolutely. we've all said it. We've all said it. And it seemed to be, well, why don't we get people talking about their family history or just the past I mean yes obviously talking to family is a big part of this and a big link in but it's not just family it's talking to friends or knowing that somebody who lives on your street and it's and it's also a focus on that loneliness and the fact that there are so many people with Covid obviously it's been really bad and really people have really felt the isolation but it's a problem all the time you know loneliness and lack of connection so it seemed that having a project which used the past as a way of starting and promoting these conversations with people was a sort of like really good social good. And archives have got so much raw material which can help promote those projects that a project which does that seems to be seems to be a really good idea. So it started off as a sort of like vague idea, thinking, well, what can do? But you know, I, so I set I sort of set up. Um, I wasn't very experienced at using social media, to say the least. <laughs> it's been a bit of a learning curve to me. But I started up setting up, you know, Facebook page and um, the Twitter feed. Um, came up with a name for it, History Begins at Home. Um, deliberately, History Begins at Home rather than just his Family History Begins at Home, because it is wider, you know, because you can be talking to people in your village about the, what they used to do in the village hall. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so, you know, because it can cover so much. That we, The past is enormous. Um, but then, and, and I managed to get some money. Um, I got a grant from the National Archives, and I got a grant from a group called the Norfolk Archives and Heritage Development Foundation which is something which I've been working with over the last few years. And that, employed, that enabled me to get a little bit of professional support. So then um, we got it all together, um, got a website up as well, because we needed a website for some of the material. And, and, and we've been able to launch the campaign, basically. Um, and since then, um, I've spent all my money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, what, what, what we're doing is um, I've got a group of, a small group of volunteers. Some of you using it, are using it for you know continuing continuing professional development some of you you know just love doing social media who are helping um the archives for network 
for, for well-being network i had a project running with that but there was a slight refocus of that because some of the things we wanted to do we couldn't do because of covid so i've used some of that time as well to help support history begins at home and it's sort of like slowly growing yeah, it's incredible. And it, it was one of the reasons we at Find My Path started doing these live sessions, actually, um, back when lockdown started. Uh, we were worried about our community and we wanted a way to bring them together and so they could we could reach them and they could talk amongst each other. So I think we, we're quite on the same page here. But obviously, as you said, your project, it goes beyond family history, doesn't yeah. it? Family history is only one small part of it. And I just think it's wonderful. It's it's just a great way to get people talking about their past and and nostalgia is a big part of it as well. I just think oh, yeah, no, it's not, I mean, I, I mean, one of the things, um, you know, we're, we're talking about well-being and loneliness, but it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, everybody who's watching this doesn't do family history for the drudge of it. Do they? <laughs> you do it because you enjoy it and it's interesting and it's a great way of finding out more and understanding the world about you and making those connections, which is really, really important. Yeah. Absolutely. I've just shared in the comments for everybody at home um, the History Begins at Home website. Take a look at that. There are some great videos on there. There are some images and there's also, which we will drop, we will come to in a little while, uh, a list of upcoming themes. We, uh, yeah. by, they're fortnightly themes, aren't they, Gary? Yeah, yeah we, have, we, we have a new, we started off doing them weekly, but it was just too much. <laughs> yeah, it's just too much work. Um, and at the start of it, you know, we put really, we, 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 we've got some videos which are on the websites and, you know, so we were trying to get some really quality, engaging content at the start, but now we're, now we're building up and we're doing them fortnightly. And that's the rhythm we want to keep now, fortnightly doing Yeah, Yeah, which seems so to the, work quite well. So the website is in the comments and the Twitter page is in the comments as well. So if you're on Twitter and you want to um, you want to keep up to date with all the news from History Begins at Home, give them a follow. Oh, definitely. And... Yeah, can follow us. Definitely. <laughs> Very important to follow us on Twitter or Facebook, you know, or both, <laughs> you know, feel free. Or both. Yes. Yeah. So the next question I had for you was, I suppose... We've already talked a little bit about why the project was important to get off the ground, why it was so timely. Uh, if people at home are interested, how can they get involved with this project? Well, I mean, we started the project really, I suppose, with three objectives. The most, and these are really in descending order of importance. The most important thing is to get people connecting with each other. Um, it's really you know we, we, we want if you know our pinned tweet at the moment which i'd encourage everybody to retweet is just it's an old picture i've got from the bt archives of a sort of 1960s 1970s version of zoom <laughs> but it's sort of like you know and the message is just pick up the phone <laughs> you know you don't need to use modern technology to make a connection um because one of the challenges with loneliness is a fifth of people don't use technology and that, that and that's not a cliche it's not just older people that's right right across the population but as the population ages they they may use technology a bit but the sort of like you know using zoom and everything gets more and more challenging and there may be so part of what we're trying to do is send get the message to people saying if you've got a relative who may be lonely you know an older relative usually pick up the phone give them a ring so the first thing is just get people to make those connections um, the second thing we were trying to achieve is when you're having these conversations, they're meaningful, interesting conversations, and there's something which is worth keeping and capturing. So one of the things we've done on the, our website is there's some tips, basically. So, you know, we've got some around our themes. We've, we've put question sheets which talk about um, based around the themes and then, and then a conversation starters. But you can print them off if you want and there's space for writing the answers. So when you're talking to somebody, you can keep it. And then you've got a permanent record, which is a sort of legacy, which you can give to your family. And they'll, they'll thank you. Yeah, don't you wish that your or our ancestors had done a similar sort of thing? Exactly. But then the third thing, this is where people can really join in, is we want people to share what they've learned in those conversations. You know, it would be really, you know, that will help us get generate that activity and encourage more people to join in if people ring up you know, their great auntie and she tells them something funny or something interesting or shares something which is worth you know please add it to our feeds tag us in you know it's the sort of thing which we'd really love to hear absolutely and i suppose uh would letter writing come into that a little bit you... sorry i didn't quite catch that letter writing do you think that plays a part as well 
Yeah, yeah, no, no, absolutely. And in fact, one of the th- I've got a meeting on Monday where we're discussing some of the upcoming themes. And one of the things we're talking about will be we have this idea of doing the themes we've been doing. We've done um, some. They're usually sort of like a broad topic. You know, the pro- probably the most wide open topic is this period at the moment because this week we started a thing called outdoors <laughs> you know <laughs> by definition you couldn't get much more wide open than that um, exactly. yeah but you know we've, we've done toys and games and we've done transport and we've done holidays and you know we've done lots of things but occasionally we, we, we've done something a little bit different so um a few weeks ago we did this theme called history begins at home memory time travel where we were challenging people to see how far they could travel back in time through conversation. So it's not about people having read books, but it's about people saying, well, when you were young, who was the oldest person you know and what did you know about them? And we, oh, well, and we, have, and we, have, yeah, and we have people sharing stories about, well, my grandfather said that he can remember when he was young being told by his grandfather that if he didn't behave, Boney was going to get him. So it was a memory of Napoleon Bonaparte. So it was wow. Napoleonic Wars. Yeah. So I... I yeah, so, so it's a little bit different from the themes. And one of those which we're thinking about doing at some stage is pro- probably around Christmas when we're doing this is communication, you know, which really fits in with our connection and, you know, people making connection. It's the time of the year when people are writing Christmas cards, sending those round robin letters. So I think um, the, the letter writing is good um, in terms of a theme. Um, there's also a thing the National Archives are doing about letter writing as well at the moment as well, which is, is, is interesting. Um, but it's also a way of communicating. You know, if you've got a... One of the things we talked about one week was wedding photographs. And we've all got, we've all got wedding photographs at home. And how many people can you name in that wedding photograph? I mean, I've got photographs in the drawer. I don't even know who the bride and groom are. <laughs> I don't know who the guests are. So why not take a photocopy of it and post it off to somebody and ring them up and say... Who can you name in this picture? What can you tell me about them? And then you'll, you know, that picture becomes a really important family historical record then, because you know who the people are in it. So yeah, so so you don't have to be tied to modern technology to get those connections going. Yeah. yeah. So everybody listening at home, we want conversations with your older relatives, with your friends about nostalgia, about what you remember. See how far back you can go with this, yep. this memory challenge, maybe back to the time of Napoleon, um, and share them. So tag History Begins at Home on Twitter, tag them on Facebook, and let's let's get talking with one another. I know we're, we, we as family historians, we like to talk to our relatives anyway. It's one of the key points as a family historian make sure you talk to your relatives to find out what they know. Absolutely. I, I, but I, I, it just goes beyond that, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, one of the objectives as well is, it's you know, I'm, I'm preaching to convert it today, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> but, but there are people who we want to get engaged in History Begins at Home who haven't really ever considered looking into family history. Um, but they are interested in their relatives' past. And it's almost like one of those sort of, it's almost like a, a gateway. <laughs> you know? So, you know, if people are engaged in those things, they find how rewarding it is to find about the past and their family connections. And it will lead them to doing family history research because they'll find out what a fascinating subject it is. A massive amount they can find out. You know, so, you know, I'm hoping that lots of these people will get, will get the bug and then start using all our resources and, you know, yeah. and find out more and more. As I'm sure a lot of us will attest, uh, family history, once you do get the bug, it, uh, it doesn't quite leave you alone. <laughs> no, no. It's, well, it's a really healthy thing to be doing. You know, we haven't talked much about well-being yet, but um, when we designed History Begins at Home, um, in my mind all the time were the five ways to well-being, which is a sort of, uh, I don't know, lots of people may have come across these, but this is a sort of like really commonly um, used thing to say, this is how you look after your well-being. There are sort of five easy, st- well, not so easy always, there are five steps to take, and I can never remember them all, so luckily I wrote them down. <laughs> One is take notice, you know, so being aware of what's around you and what's going on. Um, be active. That, that's slightly more difficult for us, being active, but if you're talking to your relatives, you know, we're talking about outdoors, and you're talking to somebody about their favourite park they used to use or when they used to go walking in the countryside or hiking, going to visit that is a really good way of tying in with being active. Give, 
you know, um, generosity and giving is important. I'll come back to that in a sec. Um, keep learning. Obviously, you know, what we're doing is all about learning and you develop skills through this and you, you, develop, you learn new things all the time and connect, you know, which is the obvious one, really. But this is you know, hugely about connection. But I think the give is really significant in the history of being into the home as well, because um, lots of us, I'm sure lots of us uh, people listening have, have had conversations with people where we've made an extra effort to keep in touch with people. You know, we, we've rung them up more often than we might do, or, you know, we've rung them up when we might not have ever before. Um, and sometimes you spend a lot of time talking about the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. And, and sometimes those conversations aren't brilliant conversations. Um, but if you're talking about, see, if you're asking somebody about, you know, who's your best friend at school? What was your favourite subject at school? What do, what, what, what do you do as hobbies? All these things. You're both giving to each other. And so therefore you have a meaningful quality conversation, which makes you both feel better at the end of it. So I think that's, you know, great. So that, that giving is really, really important part of what we've done. I, I sometimes, I, I've been run, running social media for Farmer Past. Uh, a lot of you at, at home will know if you do follow our Facebook page that a lot of the posts are about nostalgia and about what you remember, you know, what's your earliest memory, what was what was the first film you saw that kind of thing and in terms of myself like my first memory of my first very clear memory was being at some sort of steam fair in mm. Flandidno and I must have been about three at the time and I just I have these colors and the steam engines in my mind and that is so vivid for me yeah. But you just watch my face is just lit up talking about that so it's people talking about them and really you know our our focus is yes we want those memories but we we don't want them well it's fine you know we we love hearing people's memories and sharing them but what we really want people to to be making a connection with somebody else and asking them about their memories so it's that connection yeah so you're learning from them yeah that's what we're really really keen on yeah Um, i mean uh, one of the um i mentioned hobbies just now um, and one of the things which we were, one of the messages we were getting, trying to get across with hobbies is basically, um, you might think that when your parents, when you were young, your parents' hobbies, well, cleaning, washing, ironing, doing the garden, doing DIY, but perhaps they weren't actually hobbies. <laughs> they were just the things which your parents did to look after you. So you do, do you really know what their hobbies were? You know, before you came along, what did they really love doing? Um, That's a good point yeah 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 so and they did do things <laughs> you know they did have a life before children and we, we all did yeah so but but it, it sort of highlights quite often we know people really well you know we're very close to people but how much of like, their life do we really know yeah yeah now before we move on i think what we should do is we should have a quick look in the comments mm-hmm. now remember if you have not uh, shared a memory of your time when you were young with the outdoors or going on holiday or sports pop it into the comments and we'll read through a couple of them equally if you do have a question for gary about the project or about his career pop that into the comments as well i'll just have a quick look and have a quick scan through to see what we've got now kim says she's currently wading through her norfolk based ancestors Uh they all tend to link through birth and marriage sometimes several times over (laughs) I won't comment on that. (laughs) (laughs) Sue's saying visiting archives is great. Yes, it is. Yes. Love visiting archives. Patricia's saying my late father-in-law was chief archivist at the coal board. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, I know about coal mining records because I've worked in Derbyshire. I've worked in, and I've worked in South Mount Wales. One of the problems with coal mining records is they tend to have coal dust on them quite often. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, so they, they, can, they can be a little bit dirty, but but they're they're really really important records. Um, there's a great there's a great um, museum in Wales called uh, called Big Pit, which is I've uh, been there. Yeah, it's a superb place. But the amount of people who go down that pit and talk about their relatives who used to work in mining, and 
one of the things which genealogy does is gives you that personal connection with the person. And I've always thought when I've gone there, I'd love to do a project where we get the records and we make that data, that information available. So people, when they visit, they can look up, they think, well, I think my uncle may have worked here and they can find it out directly when they're in a place and make that sort of connection between place and their own personal experiences. You've frozen on me, I'm afraid. <laughs> Hello. Can you hear me? Sorry, I think my internet connection dropped a second. <laughs> yes, no, you went you went very still. <laughs> very, very still. I mean I thought perhaps what I said was really stunning, but <laughs> no, it was my connection. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Please right. continue. Okay, I, I, I'm just I, I'm looking off to the side of the screen because I'm I'm just logging into the feed because my computer just logged out to myself. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. Well, I can continue reading some of these comments that we've had through. Then um, now I had got to a certain point. Where was I? It's refreshed itself, which is very useful. My apologies for everybody at home. I'm just trying to make sure that I scroll through all your comments and read a couple out. And of course, Facebook has decided. To go down to the bottom and lost where I was, but never mind. <laughs> never mind. No, we're, we're doing okay. There we are. Okay. Ah. Sue saying family history has led me to so much other history. That's fantastic. Yeah. Ella saying when I was younger, I played with the monkeys and sometimes fighting them off. <laughs> um. Uh, what have we got here? still scrolling. Rita saying, my favourite childhood memory was the trailer at the New Jersey Shore where we spent our summers. Other family members on my dad's side also had summer homes in the same area. I have wonderful memories of the time spent with my existing family and the fun times we had spending our summers at the shore. That's lovely. Yeah, I mean, one of the things which we were talking about when I think it was when we were doing holidays was it's quite interesting sometimes. I've had this when I've been talking to my brothers and my parents. You go on holiday together, you know, we went when we were little kids' places, but your memories of those hobby, uh, holidays are actually slightly different. You know, it, you have different impressions about what you did and the things you remember. And coming together and sharing those things is it, it, interesting in the terms of, well, you're, there's always this thing, isn't there, about, you know, any research where how reliable is the evidence you're doing because because you were talking about your earliest memory and i've got this memory i've also idea of riding on a train I, I grew up in, in in devon and going on the train before it got axed but actually i think it the the line got closed down before i was born <laughs> so, so it's very unlikely i can remember that so i've obviously conflated two two things together somehow um and to find out it'd have to be well i'd have to have a conversation about you know what was the first time i went on the train <laughs> Uh, what other comments have we got here? Patricia saying my summer holidays were spent in Cumberland at my grandfather's and my aunt's at, with all my cousins and I loved it and I still do. Yeah, yeah we were lots uh, of us have got these connections with places don't we from childhood. Um, but my wife when we came to Norfolk she was overjoyed because for her Norfolk was a place you went on holiday because her grandparents lived in Norfolk <laughs> so it's like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to live in my holiday destination yeah. Um, Paul saying hi all um, back after being ill so missed the glass couple. Paul I hope you're feeling better we have missed you. Um, what else have we got? William saying when granddad was alive he'd tell us tales of learning to swim in Bermuda being thrown in the water and that's how it began. Grandma when she was alive was also convinced we were Huguenots but I've not found that link yet. Well fingers crossed you will find it William. Yeah because so yeah, because <laughs> I, I don't know the origins of my surname. Um, the, the, uh, my, my on the um, my father's side, there's a gap, <laughs> you know, where well, when the records were destroyed, my my, my um, great my grandfather, great grandfather was out in the Far East, and he was born in the Far East, and those records were destroyed. So um, my uncle spent years trying to find stuff out, and I've helped him, and you know, there's just nothing there. So so we we so the origin of the surname we can't really get back to. But one of my sort of like you know completely um idle speculations there could be a huguenot connection you know because toussaint all saints toussaint exactly toussaint toussaint as in toussaint l'ouverture or alan toussaint the um musician from new orleans <laughs> yeah. 
There's but, lots of possible connections there. Yeah, but, but as I say, I've got no evidence for that. So <laughs> really speculative. And it's all about the evidence in family history. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. yeah. Here's a good comment for you, Gary. So Victoria, thank you, Victoria. She says, my Suffolk neighbour died just before her 106th birthday, lived alone a few months before dying. She lived on our street since she was married, so she was the longest resident, and Victoria says that she loved chatting to her. Oh, I love that. Well, well, you know, I said, you know, it's not just about family history. One of the things it can be about is the history of your house. You know, which is, you know, with with the um, House Through Time programme on BBC Two, you know, lots of people are interested in the history of their houses. And a great way of finding out some of the history of your house is to speak to somebody <laughs> who's lived in your street for a very long time. And they'd love to tell, you know, as, as she's just said about her, her neighbour, you know, she loved hearing the stories. Well, I bet she loved telling them. They're making a really good connection. And you're, fi- and you're finding out some of those things about the people who lived in your house. Where, yes, you can go and look at electoral registers and you can find out and look at census returns and you can look at various things, but you're not going to get the gossip, are you? <laughs> no. And yeah. you, get the, you get the real colour when you actually talk to people and you get, the stories and the, the ones that they remember as well, the ones that have stuck in their minds. That that's the exciting bit. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, Laurie's saying excellent ideas. Facebook has allowed me as the family historian uh, to share my collection of photos and letters, and they respond in kind. That's lovely. What have we got? El- what else have we got here? Sorry, there's so many comments to go through, everybody. Thank you for sending these in. There's uh, there's lots to get through here. Uh, we've got Anne saying hello from Canada. Uh, here's one from Pat, actually. This is a good one. When my dad was alive, I used to take him on adventure days to places he remembered and properties my ancestors owned. Great great grandfather's farm, which was one of the oldest houses in England, is now a collection of po- posh properties. But dad knew it as a child and, in fact, sold it as part of a trust. I took him to that house and found a historian was living in part of it and he invited us in and dad was able to provide him with the history for his for the book he was writing about the house and the village that is incredible and 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 they both would have come away from that conversation feeling really good because they've both given haven't they exactly it goes back to it goes back to that of course lovely right what we'll do is we'll go back to um sort of the interview segment um and remember if you do have any other if you have any questions um for gary and if you've got any memories you want to share about your childhood in terms of the outdoors about holidays or sport remember to pop pop them in the comments there um so i suppose what we should probably move on to then gary is the archives for well-being and let's get into that in a little bit more detail so um we've touched on it a little bit already but is there anything else you could tell us about it yeah, well, I mean, I think well-being is such an important part of society. Um, and one of the areas which I've done a lot of work in in the last five, six years is how we can use connection with the past as a way of improving people's mental health. Um, so um, we've been working with various local charities, including the charity called the Restoration Trust on a project called Change Minds. And Change Minds is uh, most record offices well, lots of record offices have got collections of asylum records from the 19th century. And these are fantastic okay. records. You have these superb case books in them. And as well as having the sort of like really interesting details of why somebody was in the hospital and some of the background information, information on the number of children, what they did for a living and their progress through the hospital. And also we've got photographs of the patients as well. So there's that immediacy of, and they're people wearing their everyday clothes, which is always slightly rarer than all the studio portraits you get of people because they dressed up because a special occasion going to the photographer and they're, and they're such engaging records so, so what we've been doing is we we've had a program where we have been working with people who have mental health problems nowadays and using those records and, and on a sustained course uh, you know a, a period of time where they select a patient from the case books and they learn family history skills around that person so they can look into their life and That's then amazing. they move on and then they do some interpretive, creative work around what they, they've looked. So some people are very much on the sort of like um, research bent. And we've got one, one chap um, 
and, and he, he's become a complete sort of like addict to the to the archives <laughs> you know he's done so much superb research it's been wonderful you know stuff you know we've published stuff which he's, he's actually researched for on the project but other people are much more interested in being creative and sort of the um you know painting or poetry or creative writing or sewing we've done as as part of that but what we found is that it does people who um some people are quite ill but it's done them a lot of good um and, and it's not just you know i can tell that because you know i've been involved in the project and i know some of the people involved but you know we've had the university in doing a, a proper evaluation of the projects so, you know we've got evidence which says this worked so we've been running and in fact we're running it at the moment where we've got a slightly different creative element to it so on monday i spent the day um, auditioning actors professional actors because what we're doing is we're doing the first chunk of change minds with, with the research and the sort of family history so they can find out more of those people's lives but they were working with a writer to produce a stage play based upon those people's research <laughs> so um, you know that sort of creative thing so that there's a lot of evidence out there which shows that going to a gallery or visiting a stately home or going into a museum is good for your well-being you know it's interesting you're engaging with things you're being active you know back to those five ways again but i think one of the things which archives really offer is that sustained interaction with the past it's not a one-off thing where you pop in and you look at oh, well, it was a nice painting i really enjoyed seeing that it's something where you can make a personal connection where you know and, and one of the strengths of archives is you know everybody who lives in norfolk can make a personal connection with something in the norfolk record office <laughs> you know maybe they haven't got family from norfolk but they live in norfolk so we cover every square inch of the county <laughs> so there's always that personal connection and and i think um there's a real strength in using archives to create that sustained well-being um, and so I um, set up this network last year where what we're aiming to do is get change minds rolled out across the country. So um, I've got lots of other record offices really keen to working with it. So what we do is we work on a sort of like a three or more partnership basis. So we have the local archive service, which has got the records, you know, has the asylum records and the facilities and the historical expertise. Because one of the things which we got out of the project, which I haven't anticipated, is people are... Well, I think somebody said, you know, people really like being in the record office. <laughs> you know, they find that it's a really good place to be. So, you know, and these are people who you wouldn't wouldn't necessarily normally use the record office. So, so we have them. We work with the Restoration Trust, who are sort of like um, got lots of experience at um, cultural therapy, and we also work with a service provider. So we're directing our resource at people who benefit the most. So we then get something where you know we are creating that sort of well-being good. Yeah. So so part of um, History Begins at Home has grown out of that knowledge that getting people engaged with the past has got lots and lots of well-being good. Yeah. I mean, I should make add to change to the Change Minds project a big thank you to the lottery fund <laughs> because they have been funding a number of our projects. We've had fund, we've run it with um, local charities as well, but the current one is, is, is the Heritage Lottery and it fits in really well with what they're trying to achieve because they want people to be using archives in different ways and engaging with new audiences. And they're really, really keen on the wellbeing agenda at the moment, which is, which is you know, a big national issue. Of course. It's just, it's, it's, as we've already discussed it's just so timely and well-being is so important reaching out to older relatives to friends talking about your your past and your experiences it is it, as you said it's just got huge mental health benefits yes. And, and yes i mean it's really important that you know that the ch I hesitate to call it the charitable side of it because it is fun and it is a good thing to do. But also, we all need to look after our own well-being. <laughs> yeah. Time, times are tough. Um, you know, we've all been through isolation, and it's all the world's very strange, and it continues to be very strange. So, taking active parts in this, being active, <laughs> connecting, it's good for us as well, and it's an important thing. Yeah, we we may be in good mental health, but that you know, most people achieve problems in their life yeah experience problems in their life so um it's really good to be engaged in something like this to look after yourself as well yeah absolutely now let's just have a quick look at the comments gary because uh, i like reading what our uh, our audience at home well, are we're all making connections and asking people exactly. to join in and, <laughs> yeah. so we've got lorna saying i absolutely love this idea of engaging people who would really benefit from the research 
I've just come onto the website. This is outstanding. I'm really moved by this. Thank you. That's good. Yes, that's, I, 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 my appeal to people is please spread the word. Um, I, I said, I, you know, we're doing this on a shoestring, really. Um, I, yeah, I had some grants to set it up, but one of the things I would love to have had was a few thousand pounds to chuck at Twitter and Facebook advertising. But, you know, that's never going to happen. So the only way we can get the word out there, and I want to keep this going for a very long time, is for people to share the news and follow us on and retweet and retweet you know as i said earlier better on pin post you know just retweet it encourage friends to do the same and you know if we good old-fashioned networking really it is you know I, I, last week i spent some time emailing people and said can you just join us and, you know, <laughs> and, and retweet this please because you've got two thousand followers and you know it would be quite nice if they knew about it yeah so that's it's a, a good cause isn't it's it a really good cause yeah and and the feedback i get from people is it's a really good idea I really like this. It's, like, it's almost like pushing in an open door, but you have to keep pushing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Bev also saying that she lives in Norwich and Norfolk. She's uh -huh. done some volunteering at the Norfolk Records Office, and she's yeah. very interested to hear what else is going on. So that's good. Okay. Um, yeah, well, uh, well, uh, currently Norfolk Record Office is is still closed to the public. We're, we're, we're doing lots of work to get ready to open. Um, and we're going through lots and lots of health and safety procedures. So hopefully before too long, I'll be able to make an announcement about when we can. Mm. Yeah. But we're being yeah. very, very sensible. Sorry, go on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, no, no, it's, you know, it's, it is a, it, it's, it, uh, when we reopen, we need to be in a position where we know we have in, you know, we, we all live in fear of a, a sort of like major second wave and we need to be prepared for that. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, I'm just reading through the comments, Gary. There's a lot of them to get through. <laughs> We've got Rosie who says, I remember particularly the point on the rail line to go on holiday to Wales where the train whistle blew to move the sheep off the line as the train went around the corner. Well, so the sheep in Wales, huh? <laughs> there are a few. Yes, yeah. We, we, we both lived in Wales. <laughs> We've got a lot of experience in Wales. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Jackie's saying we have an annual family re reunion on the first Saturday in September normally, but not this year. We're going to organise a virtual meeting instead. That's brilliant, Jackie, because it means that you can still connect and you can still like ask each other questions and share yeah, well, experiences. Well, well, what fun it would be to fill in some History Begins at Home question sheets as part of that reunion. <laughs> Even better. And Jackie, you can find those on the History Begins at Home website. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Deborah, the first time we ever saw blue crabs at the beach, my mum used kitchen pans to scoop them up and put them in a cooler. You guys made me wonder where she got kitchen pans at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, it's not the sort of thing you usually take to the beach, is it? No. Uh. <laughs> maybe she used something that was similar to a kitchen pan, but actually, well, wasn't. maybe you didn't have buckets and spades, so she thought, I'll take some pans maybe yeah that's that's really interesting again it's going back to we've got these memories but are we remembering them quite right <laughs> um right what else have we got in here that we can have a scan through and then what we'll do is uh with what we now quarter quarter two sorry there's just so much to read it's lovely i love hearing your stories everybody uh, Patricia, thanks for telling us about the Big Pit Museum. All my male Welsh ancestors were miners and my grandfather was founding member um, of the Miners Institute. Uh, yeah. That's wonderful. Actually, when I went to the Big Pit, I will share this with all of you in confidence, or I don't know how many of you there are. Um, but when I went to the Big Pit, I did the, the tour underground and um, you get to a point where you've got to sort of crouch down quite a lot. It's a very low tunnel. And I had a panic attack, so that wasn't very fun because I I'm, I don't like enclosed spaces. Well, well, it's a really authentic experience there, and and uh, one of the you know it's, uh, relating to this sort of like capturing these fragile memories of the past because you know I'm afraid that you know death is inevitable and aging is inevitable, and but one of the great parts of Big Pit when it when I first visited was the tour guides were ex miners, so. Um, if you mentioned, you know, I remember being down there one day and somebody mentioned Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> I wouldn't say it was a very balanced view of what he said about her. <laughs> um, um, but, it's a, but it was really authentic, incredibly authentic. And that was one of the, the parts of the magic. And, and obviously that's going to fade over time. But having those views and those 
stories captured is really really important so so one of the things which um i've got another project running at the moment where we um we've got another lottery grants where we're working with community archives and one of the things we're doing is providing them with training to do oral history work and one of the things which we talk about on the website is you know capturing it one of the ways you can capture it is you can you can you know obviously ask their permission but you can make recordings of people and it's superb to have a voice of somebody because it's it's not only on to a very serious point really it's not it's not something which we really push as part of the campaign but i do think a very serious point is you know the world we're living in at the moment we have more bereavement than we're used to you know there's always bereavement and having had those meaningful conversations with people can only help us in the long run i think yeah um, the fact that we feel that we've made those connections and we've, we've captured that information and we've got a recording of somebody's voice you know that's, uh, I've, I've got a letter upstairs um tucked away which is a letter my grandmother wrote me when i was young and i think that's the only thing i've got with a handwriting on it that's really yeah. precious to me because it's a letter from my grandmother yeah of course um right um i I think I'm just going back to my questions for you. I think the last one I had for you, Gary, was really when we, we've talked, we've covered so much actually in just 45 minutes. But I just wondered if there's anything else you, you, you'd you like to share with us, anything you might, you think our audience at home might find of interest. Okay, well, I suppose we could talk a bit about what's coming up. Yeah. Yes, so, so at the moment we're doing um, outdoors. I so said, we, we've deliberately tried to keep our themes wide open. <laughs> Yeah, um, because we work, we have, we've got these fortnightly themes where we, we post things on social media, we put up a new question sheet um, and we propose things, suggestions and prompts for questions and that sort of thing and things which could trigger nostalgia. Um, but we never want to close down conversations anyhow. It's just we, we concentrate on those themes anyhow. So, so we're doing eight doors at the moment. I think um, e a week on Monday, we start on work. We thought that'd be quite a good timing to do it because, you know, summer holidays are over. We're talking about work and we'll be asking questions then like, um, um, you know, did you have a Saturday job? What did you do? What was your best job? What was your worst job? What was your first job after leaving school? Have you got any workmates you've made? You, sleep, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. So we're doing that. Then after that, we're moving on to, to another one, a bit like the uh, memory time travel, which is a little bit different. And we're doing a thing called History Begins at Home being there. And the idea of that is that there's um, Carlyle, the 19th century historian, you know, one of his famous quotes is um, history is the biographies of great men. And I don't really agree with that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't <laughs> agree with it either. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, you know it's, it's their name as well. You know? <laughs> um, but um, really, history is the parts of everybody. And one of the things which we want to do is talk about people being at or experience of memorable or great events ranging you know they can range from the moon landings to royal weddings to taking part in the three-day week or um you know being in a strike or being on a demonstration or um being at sort of like a famous music event or you know it's just just people you know connecting with the things where they were a part of that crowd which rigs up the real history which i think will be quite interesting yeah and talk you know and, and that's where having those conversations where you can travel back in time you know <laughs> a bit of a cliche question but what did you do in the war daddy um <laughs> you know, there are not cliche yeah <laughs> no no not at all no, no, um, but um but there, there are you know I mean, it's really interesting one of the conversations i've had with my father recently was i found out that um when he was in the army during national service um eisenhower visited the camp i never knew that yeah it was sort oh. of like oh, that was interesting <laughs> yeah you know and it led off into a, another conversation I, I recently one of the questions we put out on um history begins at home at the weekend was say you know why not ring somebody up and ask them what they're doing on vj day and so I, I did that and i spoke to my, my father and i said to him so what are you doing on vj day he goes well so it's about 14 wasn't that? I was probably playing football <laughs> but but that led off into a conversation about football <laughs> so it proved to be a conversation starter and it, and it was quite interesting this fact that actually there wasn't much going on because he doesn't remember it so where he was living is probably quite quiet because ve day was obviously the big thing um but he did talk about you know my uncle was still in the navy his brother to Jim VJ, so it's still, you know, so there's a relief that he was in the navy in the Far East and it was all over. 
So thank you. So we're doing that, and then we 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 are talking about themes coming up. So we've got lots of ideas, but it's endless what we can be doing. You know, we talked about possibly doing shopping. <laughs> we all have to do that. Changing habits recently. Um, we're talking about the communication thing. Um, we haven't done nights out yet. That might be quite interesting. <laughs> that would be a good fun. <laughs> you know, memories of pubs. Um, we're also talking about possibly, you know, I'd like to explore something to do with sound. Um, uh, Norfolk Record Office at the moment, we are at the hub for a project called Unlocking Our Sound Heritage. So it's a mm. British library, um, various um, hubs around the country. And part of that is we've got some superb oral histories. And part of that, you know, um, what comes out of those dialect, um, local words, you know, I, my, my mother uses the word snuckle quite a lot. I've never heard of that. <laughs> it's a West Country word meaning a mess. That's a proper snuckle. Oh. Yeah. Um, and, and there are loads of these things. And it'd be great to sort of like ask people about that and find out more of it. So it's just endless what we could do, really. Um, so and we can so we can just keep it going. And at some stage, we may we may actually repeat ourselves. Because when we started off doing things like transport and toys and games, right at the start of the project, not many people were engaged. So there's... You know, as I say, we never want to close down the conversation. Really, people, you know, talking about the past is good. <laughs> yes, and we should always be doing it. Now, I'm going to go back through to the comments, uh, Gary. Let's read out a couple more of these before we finish up. Um, what have we got here? Linda saying, "I've got all things like that written down by my late parents." That is lovely, Linda. I'm, I'm so pleased that you've got that. Yeah, and must, must, that must can be so grateful to them for doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Sue saying, what did you do during the pandemic? That's going to be a question of the future. Sorry, Absolutely. I didn't quite catch that. And I've often thought, I think so, I think we've talked about on Friday's Live before, is what, what we should mean, maybe be, you know, keeping hold of things like leaflets, um, writing a little diary about what's going on, what you've been up to. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's uh, things which you can pass down to people and record i mean i've, I've always got this um like when I'm, when I'm talking to people about why archives are so important because archives are the records which are generated in the course of activity of a business or an individual's life they're not the things which um they're, they're primary sources but that means they've got a huge evidential validity which other records which other things may not have and diaries and that letters have got that validity and I think the comparison is the difference between the diary where you're writing your contemporary feelings and the memoir so mm. I'm sure you know if you were keeping a diary in the 1930s I'm sure they would be very different than the, some people would be different from the memoir you've written in the 40s about your feelings in the 30s <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. I, yeah so, so it's a much more honest reflective thing um, and I think that's got that evidential and that connection, which memoirs are great, you know, don't get me wrong, but that value of this is what they were thinking at the time, these are the reactions, and what we've mentioned a couple of times, this is them recording it with immediacy rather than what they have remembered and maybe slightly different from the reality of what happened at the time. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So everybody, grab a notebook, grab a pen, start yep. keeping a diary if you haven't yep. already. I, I love diary keeping. I haven't done it since I was a, a sort of a preteen, yep. but it's still good fun. Well, I mean, um, uh, a reading recommendation, a superb series of books by David Carniston, um, historian. He's, he's writing a history of um, Britain from 1945. And one of the sources he uses extensively in there is diaries. Um, I, the first volume I read when I worked in the um, Glamorgan Record Office, there's this massive series of notebooks and diaries from one chap he's used, and it is somebody who recorded everything, <laughs> absolutely everything. You know, it had to be assessed, and some of it, we, it just couldn't be kept because he would go and buy a pint of milk and he would keep it in the receipt and paste it into his notebook <laughs> and things like that. But David Carlson's used them, and it, and it and his book really gives that superb. Um, well, back to what I was saying about the non-Carlisle view of history, where history is about people living their lives and the evidence which you get from a diary is superb. And then things like the Mass Observation Archive is superb for that sort of like, you know, overhaul her conversations on the bus, but it's really reflecting what people thought at the time. Yeah, a couple of people have been talking in the comments about oral history and about how it's so important. Um, we've got, <clears throat> excuse me, we've got Jackie saying, 
Um, the Warm and Toasty Club visit their care home and interview residents about their memories, but have to keep them for a hundred years before publishing. That's really interesting. I've never heard of that before. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we, we, we've if you're you know if you're doing oral history as a project where where you, you, you don't have to do you're doing it in the family. It's not a formal thing. You're not publishing, but but if you're doing a, an organised oral history project, you really want to think about how you're going to use the materials and a big part of the uh, of the ethics of that is making sure you've got informed consent from people so if you're recording you know, if you're recording stuff they really need to know what you're going to do with it, what you're going to and it may be you know if you're i mean i don't know the situation in this case but if you're maybe dealing with people who may be um have dementia or you know the informed consent becomes very very complicated yeah absolutely but, but it can be preserved yeah yeah, and I, I just think if, if there's any if there's any takeaway from today of today's session, well, every, most of you watching at home will be family historians or will have an interest in family history, and I suppose if you've not if you've not picked up a phone and spoken to a relative recently, go and ask them some questions. Send them a letter. If they're if they if they're if they're comfortable with technology, maybe drop them an email, ask them to send you some pictures and just ask them about their memories. And if you can, as safely as possible, maybe record a little interview with them, write down what their, what their memories and yeah. so they can be preserved. But, but I mean, part of what we're doing history begins at home. If you ring somebody up and say, tell me about your childhood, or, you know, tell me about it. It's a little bit of a vague question. It if you is. Ring somebody <laughs> up and say, I want to talk about your days at school. I'd really like to sort of learn more. Who was your best friend at school? then you've got a real conversation starter it's, it's sort of like to the point and you're asking a question it leads off in lots of directions um but it, it becomes much more of a, a, a way into that conversation so rather than being vague and broad and then then it gives a focus to multiple conversations so you can have a conversation about their school days you can have a conversation about their hobbies you can have a sort of conversation about holidays you know what was the first time you went on an airplane what's the first time you went abroad what was the coldest place you've ever been to well you know what, what what's the funniest thing that happened on your holiday <laughs> lovely well i think we've we've crammed a lot into 56 minutes um and as June says, life is short. Take the time to talk with your loved ones now before it's too late. Absolutely. And I just think that's probably a, I think that's a nice note to end on actually. Um, Gary, um, it's been an absolute pleasure and privilege having you as a guest today. Thank you so much for agreeing to come on and I hope everybody at home has enjoyed our discussion. No, it's, it's, always, it's good to talk about, you know, it's an important project. Um, it's, I feel it's doing people good. <laughs> you know uh, yeah I, I talk in archives about in local government we talk a lot about outcomes and this is a real example of you know what we're trying to achieve is we're trying to make people feel better <laughs> you know that that's a really really good outcome so i'll just say to everybody please follow us on twitter and facebook and join in lovely everybody thank you so much for tuning in today um, and watching from home for interacting in the comments and speaking to each other. I, I, I say this all the time, but it is so true and it's perhaps more true, you know, with this session today. I love how you help each other out um, in the Find My Plus forum and here in the comments on the live sessions. It warms my heart every time. I've got goosebumps just talking about it. And I think you're all amazing. Um, so I think we will end there. Uh, remember to tune in on Friday for Family Past Live, where we'll have a more informal chat about family history, about a theme for the week, and also our recent record releases. So thank you very much. Uh, take care and catch you next time.